Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video I'm very excited about. Today I'm going to be tier ranking all of the 2022 new releases that I read this year, which are pretty much all mysteries and thrillers since that's my favorite type of genre. But we're just going to go ahead and hop into the tier ranking for this. Here we go. Okay, so starting off, I'm going to go over the tiers. I have the top tier, which is the most amazing reads. These were just hands down incredible. I have like no critiques basically. The next one is Delightful. These were really great reads. I really enjoyed them. They definitely stood out. Good is like I enjoyed them. They were kind of in the more like average but still enjoyable. Like I didn't, I don't regret reading them kind of category. Uh, the next one is not my favorite. These are ones that I probably won't be revisiting the series if it is a series or I might be a little more cautious with my choices in the future if I'm reading from that author just because this one wasn't my favorite. And the last one is DNF'd slash didn't like. So DNF'd is did not finish because I just couldn't get through it. I didn't enjoy it enough or I just didn't like it if I did finish it. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first one, which I have is A Christmas Candy Killing. I recently read this. It was good. I wish that there had been like, I don't know, something a little different with the writing. I felt like some of the scenes were really overexplained or just like a little monotonous at times. So I feel like overall the mystery was good, the characters were good, the Christmas vibes were excellent. So I liked this. I would definitely consider reading the next one that comes out in this series because I thought the setting was really delightful. It's a bookshop called Murder and Mayhem and they also sell like poison themed chocolates which is just incredible. Love it. The next one I'm seeing is A Colorful Scheme by Krista Davis. This is part of the Pen and Ink mystery series that I really like. I'm going to put this in Delightful. This was book four in the series. It just came out, I think, in August, and I really, really did enjoy this. It's, it's just another great addition to the series. It had some really interesting twists and turns. I don't think it was my favorite out of the four in the series, certainly, but it was still really good. I think my favorite is still The Coloring Crook. But A Colorful Scheme was still really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what to pick next. Let's see, I'm thinking... Well, this one I know is a DN... I did not like this at all. This is Riley Sager's Across the Lake. I actually read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and gave it five stars. I loved it. So I was really excited for The House Across the Lake, which was his release this year. And it... I hated it. I hated the reveal for this. I absolutely hated the direction this book went. I thought it was ridiculous. If I'm being honest, it wasn't my taste at all. I just couldn't. I, I did finish it, but I, I really disliked the characters. I thought the ending was ridiculous. I will not give away the spoiler, like the twists and everything, but if you know, you know, I personally just hated that. I could not I cannot stand it. This this is, might be like my least favorite book of the entire year if I'm possibly. Like it was really bad for me. I really didn't like it. Um, in terms of thrillers, I did read Daisy Darker recently and this one was definitely, I really liked it. I actually was, I think it's the most amazing. I really want to say it's the most amazing because the character descriptions, the setting, it was on a creepy dark island, it was very like and then there were none kind of vibes where everyone's secluded on this island, cut off except everyone's family. So there's all this family history and drama that we're learning about throughout it. People start to mysteriously die or disappear. It's just fantastic. I I personally thought the twist and everything was really well done. I was shocked. I really really liked it. So I would recommend Daisy Dark. I thought that was a great thriller. Another one that I thought was really good was Harlem Sunset by Nekasa Afia. This is book two in the Harlem Renaissance mystery series. It is not a cozy mystery, please note, because I do read a lot of cozies, but this one is definitely not cozy. This one is set during the, I think I want to say like the 1920s. It's really, really interesting. I love our main character, Luis. She's a very flawed character. She's very vivid. She has a lot of things going on. There's a lot of exploration of her character arc. The mystery was good. The everything about this was really great. I really, really enjoyed this one. So that was like a good, like four star read for me. So I put that in delightful. Um, let's see. Because I could not stop for death by Amanda Flower. I'm gonna put in good. I gave it like three and a half stars. The reason I don't love it is because basically. <laughs> The mystery was just too simple, I thought. Like, the historical setting was well done. The characters were great. I really enjoyed them. I liked the build-up. I thought the pacing was good, but the mystery was just left me kind of disappointed. I thought it was too basic. 
so when I kind of got to the end, I was like, yeah, I called that, like, at the very beginning of the book, and I thought there might be some more to it, but there really wasn't. It was just a little too simple for my taste, but I would definitely read the next book in the series because I'm very intrigued by the world the author put together, so that's kind of where I'm at with that, but I did enjoy it. I'd still recommend it if it sounds interesting to you, but I just wasn't impressed by the mystery part. Wow. Okay, um, Hive and Death, that's a delightful one. That is, it's called A Matter of Hive and Death by Nancy Coco. This was such a creative, cozy mystery. All of the tidbits you learn about, like, beekeeping and the honey and everything. The main character runs a boutique called Let It Be, and she makes a lot of honey-based products. And this one involves a beekeeper who is murdered and it's a really great mystery there's so many help like interesting tidbits and like research that had got into this i'm really excited this is just book two in the series i'm so excited to see what else will come out in the series because one and two have been really good so far i feel like a lot of these were pretty good which is good um i recently finished reading peg and rose solve a murder i i don't know which one to put it in I'm trying to think. The character's incredible. The Peg and Rose are basically feuding sister-in-laws. They do not get along. They're like cats and dogs, literally. They really dislike each other. There's a lot of troubled family history there. And Rose decides to take the initiative and ask Peg to be her bridge partner at this, like, you know, like, weekly bridge club and stuff. So they start to play together, and they start to develop a little bit of a friendship and stuff as they do. One of the bridge members is murdered. They get involved in it, basically. But what puts this over the edge for me is that the mystery was good, but the characters were excellent. The setting was excellent. Everything I learned about some of the different aspects of, like, bridge or, like, poodles, because Peg raises poodles and is also a competitive, like, dog judge like in the I'm not saying that right but she like judges dogs professionally like for the kennel clubs that was really interesting that's not something I'm necessarily very interested in on my own but I really liked it so I'm kind of I think I'm gonna put in most amazing it was it was really good it was very solid um wow okay we have some I mean some really good ones here I'm gonna put two parts sugar one part murder in good very solid start to the series. I really enjoyed it. I thought there were some things that could maybe be improved a little bit, but overall I, I did really like it and I will, and that's the first book in the series, I will like anticipate reading the second book. I do have it already marked on my TBR, which it's coming out next year. So it's good. I'm hoping book two will be even better and like we'll get more into the character and stuff, but it was a really cute setting. I really enjoyed it. Good mystery. Overall, a win for me. Blackmail Babinka by Mia Panman Solid. That, most amazing. I love Arsenic and Adobo. I love Homicide and Halo Halo. Those are the first two books in the series. This one just came out in October. It's a Christmas cozy. The American, like the family drama between everyone is great. Um, our main character is a Filipino American, so I enjoy learning more about the Philippine culture and everything. That's really interesting. I, I don't know much about it to be honest on my own, and so I love hearing more about the heritage of the family and the the foods they cook and things. It really interests me. I do think she's a very kind of reluctant sleuth. She kind of gets pulled into these things. She's not as like nosy as some of the other sleuths on this list, but I really do enjoy that series and that book and it's Christmas so that just bumps it higher on my list in my opinion. I'm gonna put Renovated to Death and not my favorite. It wasn't bad but the more like I liked it more initially I think but the more I'm looking back on it the more that some of the tropes and caricatures of characters and things are just kinda of sticking out and like I'm not loving it and if I'm being honest I don't know if I'll read the next book in the series so for me that's probably like a not my favorite if I'm going to be quite blunt with that. Um, let's see Marple Collection was really good, delightful, that's basically a collection of I think it was 12 different authors, modern day authors who wrote their own Miss Marple short stories and it was done very well. They had like Ruth Ware who wrote one, I think Lucy Foley wrote one, it was really really good so I would recommend that. Uh, the Burning Pages, absolutely. That was by Paige Shelton. That is part of the Scottish Bookshop Mystery Series. I very much enjoyed that. I thought it was an excellent addition to the series. Those are always some of my favorites. I look forward to them so, so, so much. Yeah, basically that series takes place in Scotland and we have an American Delaney who has moved out there to work at this, like, esoteric bookshop and she does, like, she values different, like, 
like bookish themed um, items and discoveries because she has this very eccentric boss who gets all these cool items and things. It's very fun. There's always books involved in each theme which I really like and this one was no exception. It was a really great one so it was good. It was very good. Um, Death by Bubble Tea, that is a new series that just came out this year by Jennifer J. Chow, and that one I'll put in the delightful category. I really did enjoy the relationship between Yale, who is our main character, and then her cousin Celine, who is like a social media influencer. And Yale's father suggests that they open a like a food cart together at this like weekly festival and it actually takes off really well and Yale is pleasantly surprised by her cousin they're actually getting along well a murder happens at the festival and they're kind of suspects in it but they work together so beautifully I love to see their friendship evolve throughout the book and I can't wait to see how they work together in the future so I really did enjoy that that was a really exciting new cozy mystery for me this year hmm I'm gonna put a sprinkle in time in good because when I'm like looking at this tier list as a whole, it's definitely good, like on its own, but compared to some of the ones in the top two tiers, it's not quite at that level for me. But that is called A Sprinkle in Time by Dana Mentink. This is book two in the series, and it's like an ice cream shop themed mystery series. And I really enjoyed it. I thought the town was really good. I thought the mysteries were good in it. I just... I don't know, it's not quite, I don't love it as much as some of the ones in my top tier, so I'm going to put it in the good category. I definitely plan on reading more in the series, but this one, it's it's good. It's solid. I liked it. There we go. Um, this one here is Marmee. This is a retelling of a little woman from Marmee, the mom's point of view. It's written by Sarah Miller, and this is delightful. This was, I was in tears within the first... 15 pages. Now, to be fair, Little Woman is a very sentimental book to me. I've read it many, many times. I love it. It's absolutely a cherished book for me, so that could be part of it, but the retelling is really beautiful. The writing is beautiful. It's written, like, in a journal entry style where Marmee's, like, writing her thoughts and everything. You get to hear about different mentions of events that happen in Little Woman, so I would definitely recommend reading Little Woman first, if you haven't already, you definitely should. Anyways, it's really good. But this was a really good retelling, and I was a little apprehensive going into it just because when it's like your one of your favorite books and it's a retelling of that, that's kind of tricky. You have a lot of expectations, and this one was done very well. I thought it was really beautifully written. I got all those cozy vibes. You got a little bit of a darker look at some of the little woman scenes because it's you're looking at it from Marmy's point of view as the mother who knows how tight money is and how dangerous the war that the father is off is like often so like you get to see like more of that sharper edge that some of that is kind of like avoided in little women which I thought was nice so I thought overall very good very cozy very good for this time of year and definitely really enjoyed it I feel bad about this, but I'm going to put Under Lock and Key by Gigi Pandian and not my favorite. It it just had some like glaring holes with the plot, I felt like. I felt like it jumped around a lot. I felt like some things came out of nowhere and weren't ever really explained. I liked the character. I loved hearing about her magic act that she'd previously done. I liked hearing about her family life, but the mystery itself kind of jumped all over the place. It seemed a little off to me. I still plan on reading the second book in the series because I love the theme of the cozy mystery so much and I'm really invested in the character's backstory, but I'm just hoping the mystery will be a little more clear and just better put together in the next book. That's what I'm hoping. So I am plan on reading the second book in that series when it comes out next year, but it wasn't quite my favorite. I was definitely feeling a little disappointed when I got to the end of it, unfortunately. Reese Bowen, she's going right to the top. Um, she's one of my all-time favorite cozy mystery authors. This is The Peril in Paris. This is the latest addition to the Royal Spinus Mystery Series, which is a historical fiction cozy mystery, and it's set in, like, I think I want to say, like, the late 1930s. It's fantastic. She's so witty. Our main character, Lady Georgiana, or Georgie as everyone calls her in the book, is really spunky. She's delightful. If you're interested in like royals in Europe, you get some like nice tidbits with that and interactions with different people who are like actual royals at the time, which is interesting. The mysteries are always really well done. I highly recommend anything Reese Bowen has written. I've read both this series and the Molly Murphy series, and I'm not disappointed. Speaking of Wild Irish Rose, I'll put that in the delightful category. 
That's also by Reese Bowen, the newest one to the Molly Murphy series. I just... The only reason it's in the delightful one is because I did solve this one, I think, a little too easily, for, for my taste at least. And it's just not... I love the Royal's Finest one more. Molly Murphy series is excellent. I still look forward to all the new releases in it. But the Royal's Finest one, all the themes in that are just one step further for what I personally enjoy. But both are excellent. I would recommend either or both depending on your own interests. But that was definitely a great read. I really enjoyed it. Um, up to no good, I'm going to put in good. That, that was the first book in the Grilled Cheese Mystery series. It was really cute. It was very stereotypical for Cozy's. It had a lot of the common tropes for the first book, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it wasn't... I don't feel like the author did anything particularly special with those tropes. So I'm going to put it in good just because I enjoyed reading it. It was good, but it was about what I would expect from like an average cozy mystery, like just kind of in the middle. It's good. I enjoyed it, but I'm not like rushing to read book two, although I probably will because it was interesting. Um, next we have The It Girl by Ruth Ware. I'm, I'm so conflicted on the rating for this. I, I recently talked about it in my November reading wrap up. I'll link it above if you want a more thorough review of that. And I don't, it's very slow burn. Now it's advertised as a thriller and I know a lot of you had commented on that video saying that Ruth Ware is like a slow burn author. So I feel like there's just kind of a mismatch maybe with what my expectation of a thriller is versus like how Ruth Ware delivers a thriller. Like I feel like she'd be better off labeled as like a mystery writer or like a murder mystery writer almost in my opinion. I don't know. I'm not a publishing house, obviously, so it, that could just be my own skewed perception. I'm gonna put not my favorite. Not because I didn't enjoy it. It definitely was more enjoyable than these two, in my opinion. The ending was fantastic. Like, the crafted ending, like, for how everything came together. Absolutely great. She really has, like, an Agatha Christie-style writing where when things come together at the end, you're just kind of blown away. Like, it's so detailed and so well thought out but I just was having a hard time getting past the first half of the book which was very slow going. I liked the characters and that's the reason I continued but I had a thought at one point to actually stop reading it and so that's why I'm going to put it in not my favorite. Like it's still a good, I don't know, it's still a good read. It just depends what you're expecting from it. If you do not like Slow Burn, do not read it. I would not recommend Ruth Ware at all. But if you like Slow Burn and you're okay with that, I would read it because so far I've read two of her books and the payoff has always been very good. I personally like the other book I read by her more, which was One by One. I thought that one had a better pacing throughout the whole book. I was more on the edge of my seat for One by One throughout the whole book. So I like that one more, but I still, I'm happy I read it. The payoff was great, like I'm still thinking about it, but I just, I don't know, something was a little off. So I'm putting in that one, I don't know. Now the Paris Apartment on the other hand, I'm going to put in Delightful. That was by Lucy Foley. That is definitely very much like feels like a thriller to me, like you immediately are kind of in suspense. It's, it's really good. I don't want to give away anything with this at all, but... She's a, she's a very popular thriller writer on YouTube for a reason. She writes very dramatic, very dark. All of her characters are, like, terrible in the sense that they're all, like, terrible people usually. Like, you really only have maybe one or two people you actually feel like you're rooting for throughout the books. So if that would bother you, keep that in mind. But it's really entertaining. Like, it's just purely entertaining, thrilling writing, which is what I want with a thriller, personally. So, I liked that one. Last but not least, we have Strawberry Alive by Jen McKinley. This was really good to delightful. I feel like I gave it four stars, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it in the good, because next to these, it feels, but then, I don't know, I really... I really like... Okay, it's, it's going to delightful. I don't know. Maybe I'm just terrible at these tier rankings. I, I think it's like a good four-star read for me. It's part of the Cupcake Bakery Mystery Series, which I really, really do enjoy. And basically you have our main character, Mel, and her friend Angie. They run fairy tale cupcakes together, and it's a very great... It's a, a great culinary cozy mystery. If you like culinary cozy mysteries where they're, like, food-themed, I'll link a video I did recently up above, which was seven of my favorite culinary cozy mystery series. So that would give you some really great recommendations if you're interested in that type of cozy. But this one's a really good one. If you have a sweet tooth, you'll love it. 
I mean, you may not love it because it might inspire you to go eat more sweets, but it's so good. You have to eat something sweet while you're reading it. The mysteries are well thought out. I think her mysteries are pretty creative. Like, I feel like you get a good variety of mysteries, and this is like book 14 or so in the series, so I haven't gotten bored of the series. It doesn't feel stale. It still feels fresh every time I open the pages, so I think that's a very good sign. I did really enjoy that one. Okay, so looking at this, this is pretty good. I know throughout the year I definitely DNF'd and didn't like a lot more books than this. This just happened to be that apparently the new releases I read for the most part were really good. Um, so I'm happy to see this. Like I said, I would, I'm going to read more by Ruth Ware for sure. I'm planning on reading more from this series. Riley Sager, I'm kind of... It's just so strange because I've had a five-star read from him and a one-star read from him, and that's it. So I'm planning on reading at least one more and seeing how that one ranks up. Um, you guys gave me some great suggestions for which one to read. Um, these ones here, top tier, like absolutely fantastic. Like, I would, like, please, like, go read them. They're so good. All the delightful ones, strong recommendations. I highly recommend those series and just these authors in general are great. These ones here... I just want to make clear, like, I feel like sometimes when you hear someone say it's like a three-star read, a three-and-a-half-star read, I feel like that sounds harsh. These are all solid reads. Like, I enjoyed all of these. I don't regret a minute I spent reading on any of these. They were all good. I just felt like they had some issues that I had a hard time overlooking when I was reading them, whether it was, like, too simple of a mystery, whether it was, like, maybe the pacing was a little bit off, or maybe it just needed, like, a little more something... Or whether it just needs like a little more zest, a little more interest. But I still plan on continuing these series. I did really enjoy them. Um, so yeah, that is my tier ranking for 2022 mystery releases that I just, wow, really enjoyed. So I'm really excited to look at this and know that the majority of the new releases I read at least were good. Um, stay tuned. I am going to be doing a best books and worst books of the year very, very soon on my channel. So there you can you can get a better idea of the books I read that unfortunately were not so good um, and that were like the top like 10 of the year I think is how I'm going to do it. So definitely hit subscribe. My name is Amy Marie. If you love mysteries, definitely hit subscribe because I do almost all mystery and like thriller content on this channel. Those are my favorite genres personally and so I hope you hit subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments what 2022 releases were your all-time like favorites. Like would you rank them most amazing, do you feel like most of the 2022 releases you read were really good, or do you feel like you had more, like, not-so-good ones than I did? Let me know, and if you disagree with any of the tier rankings, like, and you would rank it differently, feel free to let me know. I love to hear different people's opinions and to discuss that in the comments. That's just a fun part of, you know, reviewing books and talking about them with other people, seeing how people liked them or didn't like them. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you guys again for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you in my next video. Bye!